in, which happens uh, uh, from time to time. But I'm glad you're here with us. Uh, type in where you're from um, so we can kind of see where everybody's from. Looks like we've got a good cry, uh, crowd in here tonight. It's great to have our special guest with us, John Knowles. John, thank you so much for oh, being here. So glad to be here. This is going to be fun. It is. It is. I can already tell it's going to be a great night. I'm um, seeing some of you typing in where you're from. I see Wisconsin, New York, uh, Petersburg, West Virginia. Anybody from overseas, Virginia, uh, Abilene, Texas, come on. Yeah. Uh, Texas, I'm from San Antonio. John's w- from Waco. Waco. Yeah. Uh, go Spurs, go. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> um, Fort Wayne, Indiana, Lisbon, Portugal, welcome, Pedro. Portugal. Glad you're here. Um, going to be a wonderful night. This is our finger style month, so I wanted to focus on finger style this whole month of May. Um, so that's what we're going to be talking about, all kinds of finger style resources and uh, things, uh, giveaways and whatnot. If you want to be a part of our giveaways, you need to be logged in through Ustream.tv, um, and that way we can see you in the chat. You don't necessarily need to chat, but we do need to, you need to be logged in so we can see you in the chat, and then we'll pick winners from that. And uh, we'll give away some fun stuff tonight. We're giving away some of John's publication, Fingerstyle Quarterly, giving away uh, CD. We're giving away uh, an Epiphone acoustic uh, guitar pack from the good folks over at Epiphone. Uh, so it's going to be a great night. To get us started off, John, can you play us something? All right. Uh, I think I'll start us off with um, a tune I learned from uh, Chad Atkins, but it's one that Jerry Reed wrote uh, called uh, Blue Finger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> A great tune. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, and that was an E? That was a key That's a key of E. It's got that bass line and the other melody that works against it. Yep. It's like kind of classical, but not with classical groove and feel. You know? That's right. And in the middle, there's that kind of thumb picking thing. Yep. So very Nashville. Yeah. Very Nashville. Very Nashville. John, how did you get started playing uh, guitar? You know, I had a, an uncle who played, and that was kind of the first time I was around it. And, uh, and then I took some of my paper out money when I was about 11 and bought a ukulele at the, mm-hmm. at the drugstore, really. And I uh, kind of taught myself, you know, a little book that has three chords. It wasn't yep. enough for me, you know. And I'd had accordion lessons, so I knew some things about music. And then I started buying records. I bought Les Paul records back when that was Les Paul and Mary Ford. Yep. Yep. And within a couple of years, I found uh, Chet Atkins, and uh, it just really hit me. So I spent a good chunk of time trying to figure out what Chet was doing. Along the way, I took some guitar lessons at a local music store from a and this the, is the in Mel Houston. Bay. This is in Houston, Houston Texas, Houston. by now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the local the Mel Bay books. You Mel know, Bay the ones, series, well, back yeah. then he had a double-breasted suit on. You know, <laughs> and you remember, this is the pick. You know, that's, you right. Know, that's right. Come on. And it was, you know. <laughs> and uh, and then in uh, high school, I ended up in a little trio that played at a Hawaiian restaurant, and no book, so we learned the songs by ear. Mm-hmm. But during the day, I was playing bass in the high school jazz band. So learning to read and be in a group. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of music going on that from when I started all the way off to when I headed to college. And then when I headed to college, I, I went in and I asked them, I said, can I major in music? And they said, oh, no, you play the guitar. Mm-hmm. This is 1960, you know. Yeah, so this is no guitar at, program. At TCU. At Texas, Texas Christian mm-hmm. University in Fort yeah. Worth. And so I majored in physics and mathematics because mm-hmm. I was kind of good at that, too. And really became uh, an amateur player for about a decade. That is, mm-hmm. I did my homework. I went home at the end of the day, and I played, yeah. still as intently as ever. Mm-hmm. So I was what I would call a professional amateur, and, mm-hmm. you know, really working hard at it. And I uh, worked at Texas Instruments for a couple of years, and then decided that I'd 
I'd slipped up somewhere following my own dream. Yeah. And uh, so Becky and I kind of talked it over, and our son was about a couple of weeks old, I guess. I quit my job, and I went and started teaching lessons. Big decision. At a music store. And within about four years, I'd met Chet. Yeah. He came through town, and uh, I met him when he played with the Dallas uh, Symphony. Mm -hmm. And we just hit it off. Mm -hmm. and so first correspondence, and then later a trip to Nashville, and before long, we were really collaborating on stuff. So. Yeah. And then at a certain point, you say, maybe I should live in Nashville instead of Dallas. You well, know? I was just going to say, <laughs> when, did you, when did you move to Nashville? So that was 1976. And by the time I moved, Chet had recorded uh, some of my arrangements, including one of uh, The Entertainer, right. that won a Grammy for right. Instrumental That's of the Year. That's his famous arrangement. Year, you know? I guess it wasn't his famous, or your famous arrangement. Well, it's, on it's, uh, it's kind of, it was one of those things that made me think the music business was more straightforward than it really is. Because if you just kind of step into the front of the line because of Chet, and then you realize, oh, well, that was a that was a fluke. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. But it's still a great town. There's so many great musicians, but also the whole creative community here, because I've learned from uh, writing for dancers, mm -hmm. from playing for film scores, all mm -hmm. kind of things. You know, you would yeah. never find in the typical city. I think. Yeah. Know? Eventually became friends with Chet and uh, worked together on many things. Uh, Jerry Reed as well. You've played with. Yeah. The uh, I met a lot of players because of Chet, because everybody, everybody knew, knew Chet. Chet. Yeah. And uh, I wrote a tune after I met Chet for Jerry Reed, hoping he would record it, called Red Hot Picker. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he recorded it. Mm -hmm. And so after that, and now I was teaching at this time at the music school that wasn't part of Vanderbilt yet, Blair School of Music. Blair School of Music. And it was about four doors down from Jerry's office. So I would go down there and hang out, and, and I decided to ask Jerry if I could write a book of how he played, and uh, and I thought I got a resource. You know, Chet, I had to figure it out from the record. I'll just ask Jerry. Yeah. So Jerry says, well, did Chet show you how he did his stuff? I said, well, no, I was living in Texas. He said, well, then I ain't showing you either. <laughs> you figure it out, and I'll tell you if you're right. So I sat down just like I did before with the records. You know, so Bluefinger had to yeah. work it out and the claw and all that. And then I played them for Jerry, and he said, well, I'll be damned. <laughs> 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 so it was, it was a really fun working relationship. I think... If you know Chet's kind of a mysterious figure, you know he doesn't talk much. But Jerry's yeah. just like we've all seen him in the movies yeah. and so forth. You know. Yeah, um, and you've uh, played with many classical players as well. I saw that you had worked with the Romero family. I, uh, I met the Romero family while I was still in Dallas because mm -hmm. there was a good classic guitar scene. And that's when I really studied the classic guitar for a while. Mm -hmm. So my technique now, uh, if the classical guys see me, they think. You look classical, but not quite. Yeah. If the finger style guys see me, they think, oh, he looks classical. Yeah, yeah. So I'm out there in the middle somewhere, but I've really benefited from all the ways I've tried to learn how to play. But today I realize that I'm a, a hodgepodge of all those techniques and musical styles. Now, when did you kind of start to hone in on the nylon string guitar? Because that's kind of your thing now. It, it really is. And I, and I went through at one time I owned the Orange Gretsch and a Gibson Birdland and, you know, played. That's what I was really playing when I gigged around. And when I quit gigging, I kind of picked up at first a Gibson nylon string. Yeah. It was just sounding good around the house. Which and is probably a Chet Atkins model of that nylon string. Was it at that time? But that was later. That was later when they... So when I'm still in Texas, there's no model. like There's no electric classical yet. Yeah, yeah. Well, there was. Gibson had a version of that one that had a pickup like Charlie Bird yeah, yeah, yeah. played. You know? okay. But yeah. I didn't have that. I was not that uptown yet. You know? <laughs> one of the first things when I came to town, Chet says, you need a pickup. Nobody can hear you. So, so he gave me a guitar that had one of the Prismatone, the Baldwin pickups yep. in it, you know, that he was using yep. at that time, so I could be heard. Yeah. You know. That was the kind of guy he was. It was not just the generosity of, like, giving me that guitar. It was the generosity of giving me advice and counsel, and I saw yeah. him do that over and over and over. Yeah. He was, uh, of course he was my guitar hero, but he was just a good guy. Yeah, yeah. Everyone that I've come across that has been part of his life speaks exactly the same yeah, way. Yeah, okay. Pretty consistent. He yeah. really was Chad Atkins. Yeah. As yeah. Jerry Reed said, well, you know, he is Chad Atkins. <laughs> <laughs> um, what guitar are you playing through today? This is uh, one made for me by Kirk Sand. And Kirk is the one who designed the second generation of the Gibson nylon string back when it was thin right. but hollow. Yeah. And uh, he made that for Chet. And I had one of those for a while. And recently... I got out my good old classic guitars that are thick yep. and rosewood and yeah. all that and had him study one of those and so make a cutaway. Mm -hmm. The neck is a little less, it's two inches like a classical, yeah. but it's a little less wood in back mm -hmm. and a little bit of radius 
to the fingerboard right, right. and a tall fret. Yeah. So I can do that mm -hmm. coming and going, you know. Yeah. It's real. So it's set up like an electric in some ways. Barbera pickup. Barbera pickup. Mm -hmm. And then what are you running through as far as a preamp? This is a, an acoustic image preamp. Mm -hmm. And it's really an amplifier, but I'm using it kind of as a direct box today. Mm -hmm. But I've got some little uh, chameleon speakers that mm -hmm. John Buscarino makes. Mm -hmm. So I'm traveling around and need to be heard live. Sounds sounds fantastic. I hope it sounds uh, great out there. Yeah, we hope uh, so, don't we? On, uh, <laughs> in your world, just a great uh, setup. Boy, Kirk it makes some fine instruments. Um, he and I have watched each other for maybe 25 or 30 years. So when he sets something up for me, he knows, and he's a player too, mm -hmm. so he knows players. Yeah. So everything about this guitar is is me. I love that about it. You know, well, so. it's, a, it's a beautiful instrument. Um, one of the things that you're, you're, you have been such a resource to those of us learning fingerstyle guitar is with arranging. Mm -hmm. um, talk, talk a little bit about your approach to taking a normal song, taking a melody, and adding chords to it, but not just chords, because that's what everybody does, but you add all these wonderful little lines and little, little phrases that are going in between. Well, I tell you, there's another thing I put in that I learned from hanging around Nashville songwriters, mm -hmm. and that is... If I'm doing a tune that's got some words, I learn the words. Mm -hmm. Chet told me to do that, you know. <clears throat> and uh, it, it gives you a way of knowing what the story through the song is. Yeah. Uh, I remember when um, Katrina came and yep. blew away New Orleans. Our daughter had just moved there. Mm -hmm. So we had visited, and I heard, do you know what it means to miss New Orleans? Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, we were all missing it because it was gone, you know. Yeah. So uh, I went to iTunes and I remember uh, finding Louis Armstrong yeah. and it was, it was a live recording so the piano player was kind of playing while Louis talked uh -huh. you know uh -huh. so but the piano player was doing this <laughs> did that for like five minutes in uh -huh. different little variations so I kind of learned how to do that and then I changed it to sound a little darker Mm -hmm. Because we just had that storm, so mm -hmm. now so it, and everything's kind of as Lenny used to say, you're never more than a fret away from a good note, and I would <laughs> say New Orleans was at least a fret away from where it used to be, <laughs> you know, so I'm sliding into things and putting notes that are a fret away from the ones you expect, and yeah. so it's a, it's the story of New Orleans, what I know about music. The feeling I had from having my daughter go through that, yeah. it's the whole world of that. And when you, when you talk to songwriters, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to capture somebody's world, not just rhyme some words yeah, and, that's and right. come up with a tune and so forth. So that, all that stuff is a big piece of it for me. And I've learned that more than anything else from being around the entire creative community yeah. uh, here in Nashville. There's something else I was doing there, that first A chord. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember doing this early on. You know, everybody learns A. The thing is, it's got a pair of A's in it. Mm -hmm. So who needs two A's, right? So very often I'll make that other A a B. So you're ending up kind of with an A2 yeah. sort of a chord. Yeah, so it's, and then to slide into it. And this is, everybody does this. Yeah. But I do it. And that's the nine. So yeah. you get the nine plus the augmented on the twist the ear a little bit a little bit differently yeah. yeah always looking for something that is uh not ordinary and, yeah. and i found that not ordinary stuff you know way back in the beginning when i learned d chord mm -hmm. i would ask myself <clears throat> what would happen if i did this or this to just or. moving one note that's one of the concepts that we've <clears throat> talked about several times is just is just taking a chord experimenting the the, the wonderful power of experimenting just you and your guitar figuring out, if I move my finger this way, it changes the sound this way. I'm controlling this. And a uh, very important concept, instead of just saying, oh, here's a D chord, that's what a D chord is, to uh, take some time, even in your own practice time, maybe the last five minutes of your practice time, just to experiment around on your instrument. Move a finger here and there. Figure out how these notes are connecting together. That's part of, part of you could, you'll be amazed at what kind of magic you'll stumble across. You know, Steve, what I do too is, and I, I started doing this early on, and now I realize it was a big deal. 
uh, if we're going back to when I started, this, that was 60 years ago. This is my wow. 60th guitar birthday Amazing. right now, you know. So I still remember what it was like to go. And kind of sing those notes. And if I raise that one, I have to. And what happened along the way is I got to where what I could sing was a way of putting what was in my ear kind of out in the room. Yeah. And so my fingers and my ear and my voice were all coming together. Yeah. So that now, after years of doing that, if I'm here mm -hmm. and I'm going to put my finger here, I know it's going to sound like that. Yeah. From having yeah. done that so much. It also means I'm pretty terrible if you give me a bizarre tuning because none of the notes are where my ear expects yeah, it. Not just my fingers. Yeah. My ear doesn't think they're going to yeah. be there. Drop yeah. D, yeah. Yeah. Everything else, yeah, up for grabs. <laughs> um, one of the things that we wanted to do tonight, uh, which th is just one of the advantages, you know, we've had so many great players come through here in, in, uh, uh, over these different live lessons, uh, but it's, it's rarer that we get the combination of a great player and a great educator at the same time. Uh, one of the things that uh, John wanted to do, and I just think it was fabulous, is to kind of show a little bit of a couple of tunes. So if in the thread on our discussion board for this lesson, I put up, um, there's four different uh, links there. Fabian, maybe you can put these up. Thank you, gosh, Fabian, you're already ahead of me. Um, putting up uh, the links, there's two songs that we're going to try and get to. This first one that we're going to try and do is a song called Bassa Crescente, uh, which is a, 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 a variation of House of the Rising Sun. Um, so if you haven't downloaded that already, go to those links. Thank you, Fabian, for putting that up. You can just download the music. We've got the music written out, chord blocks, and uh, uh, a sample of that boss of rhythm. In fact, let's we might as well probably do that while, sure, we're, yeah. while we're here talking about that. Well, you know, you mentioned being an educator. I think every guitar teacher, after a while, goes to night, bread at night, praying they will never hear House of the Rising Sun or Stairway to Heaven again. You know? <laughs> and so this is one of those songs that I thought really needed to be reworked. And I think the way everybody plays it would be A minor, mm -hmm. then C, yep. and D, mm -hmm. and then F. Right. That's kind of the Animals record that we're yeah, yeah. hearing. Yeah, I, I watched that version. So what I did was, I, first thing I did was I just took those chords and took the bass line down. There could be a G in a C chord, mm -hmm. and there could be an F sharp in a D chord, and there mm -hmm. could be an F down low. Mm -hmm. So, and then when I went back and did a bassa, that bass line is still there. So yeah. this didn't just kind of pop out of the sky all at once. Yeah. I was already playing around with it. And then I was at a camp, and uh, there were actually two teachers saying, what if we had taught each other's classes? And the bassa teacher said, what if I had taught your class to the party guitar teacher? So he started playing, you know, bossa chords to this, mm -hmm. and he didn't quite do this. And I thought, I'm going to work that. So There's you some, see somebody, and you go yeah. home, and you do your homework. Mm -hmm. And so now what you've got is, if you play the chords that are there on the sheet, there is a house in New Orleans. They call the rising sun. It's been the rain of many poor boys and long. I know I'm one. Then I put an extra two for a yeah. turnaround. Yeah. Then if you do that with a boss of feel. And so yeah. on. Then you've got a whole different song. I've played this without telling people what it is, and they'll say, I've heard that before. What is that? <laughs> it's, it's well enough disguised, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, it's a real tough name, that tune moment, you know. So. All of this is written out. We're just gonna we're gonna play it here in a second. But all of these chords and chord forms are written out on that uh, sheet, uh, which is free to download. Um, so take a look at it. We'll play it. We'll uh, I'll try and keep up with you through it. Yeah. Neither one of us has to sing, right? Uh, no, I, I hope not. <laughs> Goodness, I hope not.
Judgments while you wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, something like that. <laughs> there you go. You Beautiful. You know, the thing that's so fun, I'm telling you, this is true, isn't it? You don't have to change anything about playing House of the Rising Sun. Yeah. Because these are really the same chords, just unusual voicings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And unusual rhythm. Yeah. But if you just think about how to play House of the Rising Sun, it's still it just still there. Works. Yeah. It still works. Um, if you're interested, please download that um, uh, PDF. It doesn't have every note that we just played, but it's got the <laughs> chord forms, and it's got it shows you that boss of rhythm. And then I just I just put the uh, put the uh, um, put the rhythm to it. So um, there you go. Um, <coughs> let's do a uh, let me do uh, before we get on and talk about that other mm -hmm. song. I wanted to uh, uh, give away a few things and talk about some of the resources that we're doing for this. Um, uh, uh, for this evening. Garrett, do we need to take a break or can I keep going? Keep going, but you need to fix your All right, all right. Um, good, all right. Um, let me tell you about a couple of resources and then we'll uh, take a break for promo and fix some things here on the set and then we'll be right back. Uh, let me talk about the resources for this month. It's Fingerstyle Month. Um, so we wanted to feature uh, the Fingerstyle course. I did a course, oh, back last year. Uh, it's around October-ish of last year. A fingerstyle course, just kind of a basic fingerstyle course, taking taking you through the steps necessary to kind of get control of your hands and uh, um, to where you can learn how to play fingerstyle. It's quite different in, in approach from how you'd play blues or something like that in a, in a uh, uh, normal electric setting. Um, it's a 10 DVD course. Um, comes with a book as well. You can print out. It's a great resource if you're interested in learning how to do fingerstyle guitar. Uh, check it out, Fabian. You've got a link for it there um, as well. Um, also, and then for our resources this month, I was thinking about um, what we could do for uh, fingerstyle players. And gosh, one of the best resources that has been out for 10 years or more has been the Pumping Nylon series by uh, Scott Tennant, a uh, uh, great guitarist from the uh, Los Angeles Guitar Quartet. Have you crossed paths with Scott? Oh, yeah. I've, I, I know all those guys, and I've taught at workshops with Scott. Mm -hmm. He's great to watch, and, and that book is through the roof good. It was, it, I've seen some of his videos. Now, the, the DVD, there's a DVD that comes with this, and uh, it's a few years back, but gosh, it is entertaining, and his playing is just impeccable, and he's a good explainer of exactly what he's doing, exactly what you should be trying to accomplish in this exercise, not just the notes, but I mean, what you're going after is this concept and he's great at that you know I, I think also that's one of those books i send people to if you already play a lot of guitar but you haven't tried finger style yet yeah this is i mean some people will say oh no that's too much too hard too easy it's just right if you already know how to play and you want to get this going yeah it's yeah. amazing yeah this is uh this <clears throat> is the resource and they have a regular book and then they've got a couple of repertoire books with it this this complete version has all three of those resources in the, in one book. So it comes with the Pumping Nylon book, the two repertoire books that are with it, as well as a DVD of Scott explaining the stuff, and then a CD of all of the uh, songs that are played in the repertoire. It's a great resource, and we were able to make a good deal on it, which is $27.99. So it's a great deal. Uh, if you're interested in it, if you're interested in, in delving into classical guitar or fingerstyle guitar a little bit more, getting control of your... Uh, picking hand, your fingering hand down here. Um, check out these resources, great stuff. It's the blue button underneath your Ustream window that you're watching us right now. There's a blue button there and that'll get you to our monthly resources for that, um, for all of that. Okay, we're gonna take a quick break um, and then we'll come back and talk about uh, John's resources, uh, Fingers Talk Guitar Quarterly and play a little bit more for you. We're gonna give away some great stuff. So hang with us for about 90 seconds. Legacy Learning Systems Learn and Master line of courses features an exclusive multimodal learning process to build skills from the ground up. By utilizing four modes of learning, reading, listening, watching, and doing, even a complete beginner can follow this easy-to-use program of self-directed study. Building confidence and skills, our system allows the learner to progress through intermediate and advanced levels to full mastery. Each course contains between 12 and 22 DVDs of visual instruction, a full printed workbook, access to our online support community, 
as well as three to five audio CDs in our music courses, which include fully produced jam along tracks. Learn in the privacy of your own home, at your own pace with the Learn and Master family of courses. Bring your dream within reach. Hey there, Steve Krenz here, and I have some exciting news. We're finally finished with our brand new guitar course. You know, when we asked our students what they would most like to see from us next, it was overwhelming. Fingerstyle guitar. So that's right, we've created Fingerstyle guitar. Learn and master spotlight. Fingerstyle guitar is our newest addition to our line of guitar courses. This is the result of popular demand from our friends and followers, and I couldn't be more pleased with how it's turned out. You know, imagine sitting down with just you and your guitar and playing a solo fingerstyle arrangement of one of your favorites. You know, I created this course so you'll have the tools to do just that. We've got special guests, interviews, basic, intermediate, advanced lessons and everything from traditional acoustic fingerstyle playing to arranging songs for solo guitar to classical jazz guitar, Merle Travis style picking with several stops musically in between. This is going to be a very thorough course, so get ready to take your guitar playing to an entirely new place. All right, we're back. Sorry, we, we got some technical difficulties. We've got it worked out, though. Uh, if you guys have any questions, guys and gals, if you folks have any questions um, for John or uh, for us as we're going along, type them into the chat, and our producer, Garrett, will put them up there as well. If you, you, know, if you have a question, something pops up in your head, um, ask it. And that's one of the great things of doing this live. We can, we can uh, uh, get it put up here, and we can answer them as we're, as we're doing that. We were talking about resources, and one of the things that, that John does that I have benefited from, gosh, you've been doing this for how many years, Fingerstyle mm, Quarterly? About a little over 20 now. Yeah. Wow, yeah. over 20 years. Um, John puts out a resource called Fingerstyle Quarterly, um, which, uh, Fabian, you've got the link to that. Thank you for putting that up. Um, it's a publication, comes out four times a year, and it has it's chocked filled with songs in... Uh, standard notation and tab comes with a CD along with it mm -hmm. too. Um, well, as a matter of fact, the the bossa nova stuff we were just looking at is the back page of one of the issues, right. and the little MP3 they downloaded is one of the tracks off the CD that comes with that issue. So that's you can kind of and plus I just talk through things like you and I are doing here. Yeah. When I when I saw you do this and I thought that's the quarterly, <laughs> except with Steve instead of John, because <laughs> yeah, I feel like it is a chance to. To share what I know, I was I was really lucky for a while. I was writing articles for Jet, yeah, yeah. for the guitar magazines, and then they changed hands and they quit the articles, and so I thought I'll start this, yeah, so I can keep the conversation going. So that's yeah. kind of how I thought of it. Um, so many of these are great little arrangements, a variety of um, um, styles, a variety of skill levels. So there's things that are easier, there's things that are more advanced, and what I love about it, it's great for it of just the education the mp3s you're talking through it just like just like john was uh doing there oh okay this is the chord i'm playing here this is why i'm playing that and this is why it works in this situation it's a fabulous resource check it out if you're interested in uh uh getting a great quality resource uh for teaching you fingerstyle guitar check out john's publication fingerstyle quarterly um i believe i saw a chet atkins quote on it what was it uh, Chet Atkins himself referred to it as a chance to steal from the best. <laughs> so there you go. Um, we're going to give away this one that I'm holding in my hand. Right, of, it's called uh, Bluefinger, I think, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, so, yeah, it, the tune yep, I played earlier the in the tune show. The tune yeah. that opened the show, uh, Bluefinger, is in this episode or is in this one, as well as a, uh, a that, CD. We'll get John to mm, autograph this CD. That's as right. Well. The CD was one I recorded in uh, Chet's basement mm -hmm. back in the day. He would call me up and say, well, I'm free. What are you doing? He didn't want me to worry about it. So he would call me at, at yeah. 9 o'clock to record it then, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, someone is going to win this. It's going to be a, a, a lot of fun. Uh, the winner of this uh, publication and the autograph CD is uh, Great Great Dane. Great Great Dane. So if you are uh, Great Great Dane, what you need to do is email us at service at legacyinstruction.com service at LegacyInstruction.com and uh, give us your, your mailing address and phone number, things like that, and we will uh, mail this out to you. So congratulations. Uh, 
That's wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, had a question. Uh, <laughs> I see lots of questions popping. Why does he hold the neck so high? You know, I, I know the answer to that question. Uh, I really studied the classic guitar for a while. So if you imagine, you know, the footstool with your leg up here, yeah, yeah. that's kind of where I'm coming from. And it has a lot to do with having the, uh, the right hand, I mean, excuse me, the left hand and your arm mm -hmm. free to move quickly up and down the neck. Yeah. And, uh, but also it positions my right hand to get a good tone. Yeah. So those two things. But now, I don't sit like a classical player all the time, although sometimes I do. Mm -hmm. But with a strap, I could stand up and have the guitar still yeah. be where it is. And, and I've looked, and, and I know it looks different than most people you see, but like George Benson plays this way. And he's not Very a classical high. guy. Yeah, yeah. But high and up and, you high know, and so. And I think there's something about the left hand and, and the right hand that are just good that way. I think everybody has to kind of find their own spot. Mm -hmm. And it has to do with the technique, but also the voice I'm trying to get so that when my fingers hit the strings right and how I'm trying to make the music. So there's a lot of little decisions that we all make. Yeah. And I, and I want everybody to learn as much as they can, but ultimately be your own guide, yeah. you know, take, take your own advice. Yeah. Um, be aware of your own comfort as you're, as you're playing, as you're practicing. One of the, I, one of the concepts that I, that I was uh, fortunate to learn early on is just you, you play a lot. And so if you're not paying attention, you'll get hunched over or you'll have your foot up and you'll have your back twisted at some sort of awkward <laughs> position, and then you get up after playing an hour or two, and you go, "Gosh, I'm kill it's just killing me." Look at what you're doing. You're you're all twisted up. Be aware of the the how your guitar is 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 sitting on your on your body and how you're playing it. You want the least amount of resistance uh, in your in your just your body posture so that your fingers can do what they need to do. Um, had a couple other questions. Uh, what still challenges? John? <laughs> well, when I work up an arrangement, it, it almost seems like, because I'm being guided by my ear as much yeah. as anything else, that there'll be something in almost every arrangement that, is, that I've never done before. Mm -hmm. And so an arrangement that I make up now may be 80% familiar stuff, yeah. but something that I have to figure out how to do it. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, in, in a minute, when we come to Chicken in the Rain, mm -hmm. I'll show everybody what it was that was that I'd never done before that I had to figure out how to do and how I figured out how to do it. That's the big thing. It's not just that it challenges you, it's that you want to spot a challenge and immediately sit down, like pull over to the side of the road, you know, and solve it. Figure out what's not happening, what you need to do to make it work, work through it slowly, and then see if you can integrate it into the tune so that it stops being a challenge. It begins to be part of the 80% yeah. then. I, I, just this week, I heard this. Um, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, that is the amount of time you have when you decide, when you've played something and you make a mistake, you have 0 0.25 seconds for the average person whether you decide you're going to move on and not worry about it and blow off that mistake or whether you're going to go back and try and fix it. Um, 0 0.25 is, the, is the, the difference between a pretty good player and a great player, <laughs> because a pretty good player will go, ah, well, I botched that, but that's all right. Yeah. And, and a great player will go back, try and fix those things, yeah. try and figure it out. You know, another thing uh, that Chet told me, it was great to hear stories from him, but he said when he was a kid, uh, his brother was on the radio. He was in Les Paul's trio. Mm -hmm. So he's listening to his brother, and so Chet puts a stick in the ground and puts a can on the stick and announces himself, because his brother has told him, you can't stop on live radio. So Chet announces himself and tries to play things all the way through, recovering. He's like 12 or 13. Yeah. So he's already figured out that going on and, and living with what you just did and, and letting the, mu the music pull you into the next moment, not, not your fingers. Yeah. Nobody cares about your fingers. Yeah. They care about the music. You That's know, right. So. And you want to let your fingers, um, you're teaching me this, John. You don't even know it, but you're teaching mm -hmm. me this as you're playing an arrangement, not to let your fingers be the guide, but let your mind be the guide of where you want your fingers to go. Um, so the music is starting in your head. These lines, these ideas for lines are starting in your head, and then you try and figure out a way to make them come out through your fingers rather than often, so oftentimes we approach it the other way. Oh, I've got the melody, and here's just a convenient way for my fingers to play it. Yeah, that's, in, that's, a, that's, that's like running a race and saying left, right, left, right, <laughs> instead of look, keeping your eye on the finish line, you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got one more song we wanted to uh, show you all. 
Uh, there's a song, it's PDF, is on the, on the discussion board, song, a little song called Chicken in the Rain. It's a little bit more advanced than the, <coughs> the one we were doing earlier. Um, and uh, it's a short little uh, piece. It's got the uh, music and the tab to it. Um, kind of talk us through it, John. What are you doing on this All right. piece? Well, the, uh, this piece actually came out of an assignment to write short pieces for a column in Fingerstyle Guitar Magazine. Mm -hmm. And so what I did is I pretended that I'd gotten the assignment from public radio. Because mm -hmm. you know how you have all the short pieces, mm -hmm. you know, between the stories. And so there's the, all the pieces have references. This one, Chicken in the Rain, combines uh, the farm report with the weather report. All in one <laughs> tune, you know. And also the idea of like wet chickens was just so funny to me, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so that's where a lot of the... And, uh, and then I tried to do that with unusual rhythms while I was keeping basically that Nashville, you know, Merle yeah. Travis, Chet Atkins thumb. Yeah. So there's places where you've got to, and if I look down there, uh, da da do do do, it's like that second line at measure five. So you could almost make a little exercise to do yeah. that. You could do just the fifth measure. Oops, I had my little finger down. And you could make a little exercise out of just yeah. that if you're not used to doing, you know, the alternating sound. That was the hard spot. Yeah. And then the other hard spot is in measure 9, 10, 11. Uh, I kept trying to come up with a middle section. And yeah, I, see, that was the part that I, I was messing I mean, up when I was going through it today. Yeah. And so what I had to do is I'd teach myself to hang on with my second finger. Mm -hmm. And then oh, is okay. swap, uh, what is that, 1 and 3. Yeah back and forth between the strings, so. And I'd never, that's so weird, but it kind of went with, yeah. you know. So the, sec, the that part is. And the trick is, anchor here and then get those other two going back and forth. And it was hard at yeah. first. But I knew that's kind of what I wanted to do. Yeah. So you pull over and you practice it, you know. And then uh, I remember my wife telling me at one point, it's not funny enough yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's not, I hear, I, don't, I hear the chickens. So she said, why don't you start it with a big thud? Mm -hmm. So the big thud is that first note. Then, which is a kind of a, one of the old standby finger style yeah, things, yeah. you know. So um, much played for Chicken us. in the rain. Beautiful. As I played through it, then I played that first section twice. Yep. I didn't mean to do that, but you know, no, guess I, I, I guess I was having fun. Right, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Can't have too many wet chickens. Um, you know. If you're if you're interested <coughs> in that, download that. That's great. Um, that's a lot of fun. Um, well, I would love it if all the fingerstyle players in the world learned how to play Chicken in the Rain. I'd feel like I had served my purpose on, my <laughs> on Earth. So. Good. Well, help John fulfill his purpose. For goodness' sake. <laughs> um, <coughs> Had a question, asked John what his top two nylon string tunes to play are that an intermediate player can play. Uh, well, let's see, if I think about the ones that everybody kind of knows, um, uh, I love still uh, Windy and Warm, you know, Chet's tune that mm -hmm. uh, John Loudermilk wrote for him. Mm -hmm. That's an A minor. And it's got... The oh, same yeah, time you got yeah. the thumb. And 
the nice thing about it is you can learn that much and have a great time. Yeah, yeah. Then you like the next section. It always comes back to this. So it's got several little sections. Uh, What's the name of that? Windy and Warm. Windy and Warm. Windy and Warm. John Loudermilk. Yeah. yeah. And it's got, you know, it's, you can find it on the web, uh, web, you can find the tab to it in several places. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been published a lot, you know. So get busy with the Google and you'll <laughs> find it. But it's a fun tune to play. I uh, wanted to give away one more of uh, John's Fingerstyle Guitar Quarterly. And this one has a different C in it, th uh, CD. This is uh, his Waltz Forever CD. Um, tell us about the CD. This one, uh, the other one, uh, the sitting back picking, is a solo set. This one, uh, I met a bass player in uh, Vancouver, British Columbia, Rene Wurst. Mm -hmm. And he's like a studio player mm -hmm. up there. Uh, and so we decided to do a duet record, but his wife is a great singer. So we've got her vocals on a couple of tracks. And uh, we did uh, the Bossa Crescente together, and she translated the port lyrics into Portuguese. and. So it's beautiful. Fun, fun set for me. You know. um, uh, I, John had given me both of these CDs, and they have been in my car. Just, just such gorgeous arrangements of Beatles tunes and other things. Lots of fun stuff on here. The winner of this one is uh, I M A Fingers. I'm a I'm a Fingers. No, no, I M A. I am. It could right? be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the class of guitar uh, uh, finger notation. Uh, I'm a Fingers. You need to email us at service at legacyinstruction.com, and we will get this out to you. Send us your email mm -hmm. or your physical mailing address and phone number and whatnot, and we'll get that out to you. All right. Um, fantastic. have a couple of questions uh, that folks had, had posted on the, on the uh, discussion board that I wanted to get to. DJ uh, Dave from Toronto asks uh, about your thoughts on economy of motion, especially on your picking hand. Yeah, I think a lot of that is uh, with the right hand, I get these three fingers like snug, mm -hmm. and sometimes they're almost touching, and mm -hmm. sometimes they are touching. Yeah, yeah. So that they kind of know how to find the strings. So if my ring finger is on a string, mm -hmm. and my other two fingers are headed somewhere, there's going to kind of, just that little finger is going to kiss these two yeah, as yeah. it moves into place. So these three are really working like a team of horses that mm -hmm. can do independent things also. So the, for instance, when I was doing the bossa stuff, the three are really together, yeah. and it's like one fat finger with three fingertips. Mm -hmm. um, and then other than that, I think I did things where you would go and just move your thumb with your fingers actually on the strings, yeah, yeah. so that you get good at finding the strings. Or here, move your fingers back and forth. I don't know whether you can see this. Look at, look at John's hand. There's some, some important concepts of, of playing well. His thumb is in front. A lot of times you'll have a tendency to back that thumb back, yeah. and then it gets in the way of the other uh, things. Garrett, maybe you can get a shot of this. Uh, notice how the thumb is in front, and that's just a little, that's a little key. Look at your own hand. If you notice your hand and that thumb is, is too far back, mm -hmm. it's going to get uh, difficult for you to play. You know, the other thing that I'm doing here is uh, my hand, if you look at this knuckle right here, it's probably two and a half, three inches above the strings. Mm -hmm. I'm not playing real flat. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to get and that If you hand. do that, then your fingers tend to move like this instead of like this. And I kind of want to move uh, almost like uh, like I had a, a pet cat and I wanted to pet that cat. Yeah. You know, and so I'm moving my whole finger and the mo motion is really coming yeah. from the tendons and the muscles back in here. And it's interesting, there's a lot of strength but I'm mostly coasting most of the time. It's like having a big engine in your car. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to hit the gas all the time. So, and you want you want the pressure to be in your, in your, uh, or the strength to be in your hand. You don't want your, your, your wrist to be having to exert pressure and stuff like that by being too far in or something like that. So you want this to be comfortable so that the fingers can do what they need to do when they're doing fingerstyle stuff. And I notice you don't have very long nails. Have no, they, they look long from the front side, but from the back side, they're just kind of little crescents that outline the shape of the finger. I'd say it's maybe about an eighth of an inch. Mm -hmm. If you're, if you're uh, looking, I don't know whether you, we've got a, a shot on it, but just about an eighth of an inch, even on the thumb. Uh, it's not very, not very no. long on that. And I, it, I use that because I can play mostly flesh mm -hmm. or I can add nail. Yep. And it, it gives me a little EQ. It's the way I make melody stand out from accompaniment and so forth. So I spend a lot of time 
kind of try it. In fact, I, to make my finger sound alike, I would do. He's playing the same note. I don't know whether you can see that, but he's, he's just changing fingers, trying to make finger. the note sound the same. Yeah. Because each finger's got its own set of tendons and its fingertip, and the nails are all different. So you're trying to find out how to make these three fingers work as part of a team. Do you and ever your use ear your pinky? guides you. Hmm? Ever use your pinky? I don't. Yeah, it's kind of standard that you don't really yeah. use pinky. In some flamenco things, you'll use your pinky. Mm -hmm. Again, I don't know why that is. It just kind of, it has a little bit less probably dexterity than the others, but mm -hmm. I guess you probably could do it, but uh, standard, you usually use your, your uh, three fingers. Well, and, I, and over here on this side, uh, there was a time early on when I had not seen any good players that I was playing the guitar, and it looked like alligator wrestling, you know. Yeah. And I, I kind of went through, and I remember the first day I, there was a mirror in my, dorm room, you know, and I looked at it and I say, what would I look like if it wasn't that hard to play? And I just kind of sat there and looked at myself doing this. I wasn't playing anything. Yeah. I thought, that's what it's supposed to look like in order to sound like yeah, yeah. what I was hearing on the records. Yeah. So I spent a lot of time learning how to kind of float from one thing to the next uh, yeah. and looking for the finger that would help me guide mm -hmm. to where I need to be next. So even if I'm going from here, there's always something kind of guiding the shape. I'm not trying to completely let go of shape one to get to shape two. Mm -hmm. It's more like shape two morphs yeah, yeah. out of shape one. And his thumb, you, I don't know, you, you can't really see on this angle, but the thumb on the back of his neck is fairly consistent. Mm -hmm. Where he, Wherever, his, no matter what the pyrotechnics are going on on the front, that thumb is about, oh, halfway or two-thirds way up the neck, and it just kind of coasts on that line right there. And if the neck weren't there, you'd see, that's where my thumb is. It's kind of yeah. behind those middle two fingers. Now, occasionally, I'll do something where my thumb stays fixed and my hand might yeah, do yeah. this, because that's a way to make an unusual move and yeah. come back to where you were. Yeah. It's that, was it Yogi Berra's line, is that if you come to a fork in the road, take it. And I think that is how you do guitar technique. Almost everything was, should I do this or that? And the answer is, you betcha. Because <laughs> <laughs> it all works sometimes. Um, <coughs> we had a question. Don Cole, I don't want to put you on the spot here, yeah. John. Don Cole from New Brunswick, Canada. <clears throat> One of your very famous arrangements is oh. of Vincent and of Starry Starry Night. Do you have a couple of bars of that? Yeah. <laughs> it it really <laughs> helps to start with a song you love in the first place. Yeah. And then in that case, uh, finding uh, the open D and playing it in the in the open sixth is to D, mm -hmm. and playing it because uh, I heard Don McLean do, mm -hmm. and that's as far as he'd go down because he was in a different key. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to keep going. So that's what kind of led me into that. Um, guitar playing. Let me just ramble here for a second. Guitar playing is uh, uh, fun and pyrotechnics and, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but there's also a wonderful side of guitar playing that is just making music. And uh, it's sweet and tender and uh, wonderful. And I would, I would trade my pyrotechnics <laughs> in a heartbeat to be able to get a sweet, sweet sound and be able to create music like that, bring Thank music you. out of the Thank instrument you. like yeah. that. I think a lot of it too is uh, temperament. Yeah, I'm just a mellow guy, you yeah. know, and so I'm, I'm kind of drawn to these things that are that way. But then I also love spunkier stuff. You yeah, know? and uh, 
but uh, I've never set myself on fire yeah. in, in my 60 years. So. <laughs> um, may I ask you, how old are you? So 71. You are 71. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All of you guys, all of you folks out yes, there yes. that might be thinking, is this too, am I too old? Am I too old to be able to do this? Am I just <coughs> physically too old to be able to play well? Um, no. 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 A lot of it has to do uh, with, uh, I mean, every morning when I wake up, I'm stiff like anybody else. And as I age, that little hour when I'm stiffer has turned into two hours. You know? <laughs> so I wake up and I shake my hands and mm -hmm. have a cup of coffee and put some music on and just mm -hmm. and really remind myself to loosen my shoulders and, and just kind of put myself back in my body. Yeah. And then the way I start the day on the guitar is... <laughs> remind myself that it's that there's a certain effortlessness to it yeah. now that effortlessness comes from having built up the strength mm -hmm. to be able to do it effortlessly yeah uh, but every now and then when I've been somewhere and somebody will say can you give me a quick guitar lesson and we don't have any guitars I'll reach over and I'll say this is all the harder my left hand is working yeah, yeah. and they'll always go because oh, that you know, they're so used to yeah, yeah grabbing it and I'm trying to keep it to where only what's required, yeah. and everything else, save it for later. You know. Can you still, I'm asking rhetorical yeah. questions, yeah. Um, a lot of folks feel that as they age, they cannot learn as well. Just the mind is, is, <coughs> is less elastic in that sense for well, learning. Here's, here's what I think, and this comes from both the fact that I have been 11 when I was doing this and 71 when I'm doing it, is uh, at different ages, we have different things that help us learn. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was a kid, I was uh, uh, full of confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, I had, I felt like I was bulletproof. Mm -hmm. I could do anything. I could ride a bicycle. Mm -hmm. I could do all this stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. So you got that kind of learning, you know, energy going for you. But as an adult, you're way smarter about the whole procedure. Yeah. And you're much better at, like, setting time aside, at saying, I've got 15 minutes. I think what I'll do for five minutes is work on that one spot. And then I'll see if I can play that. And then for another five minutes, I'll work on a new tune. Mm -hmm. And for the last five, I'll play that tune I love so I can finish yeah, loving yeah. the guitar. Mm -hmm. And, and that, look, kids can't do that, you know. Yeah. I, I just kind of didn't do my homework instead, you know. <laughs> so, but at every age, I think it's important to know what's going to give for you. And also the thing that happens to your hands over time is we all use our hands as an extension of our personality. Yes. And one of the reasons I think my hands are still loose I just have a kind of a loose approach yeah. to life. Yeah. If you're if you're somebody who's been doing this a lot or swinging a bat or mm -hmm. you know, hoeing it, then your hands are more like this. Mm -hmm. And somewhere in there, you got to loosen and just let that be express yourself. I think in a different yeah. way. But. Yeah. Um, we'll let John take a breath for a second. Um, wanted to get to a couple of things uh, before we close out. Um, um, reading some of the wonderful comments down here. I'm 60, started playing at 59, having fun. Uh, uh, I'm 64, another one says, soon to be 65, been studying the course since January. You're never too old to learn. Let me just tell you that. You're never too old to learn. Uh, learn how to do new things uh, as well. My wonderful dad, who's probably watching this right now, dad, uh, is practicing his guitar every day and uh, trying to do new things. Keeps you fresh, keeps you... Keeps you alive. Mm -hmm. um, all right, a couple of closing announcements, and then we're going to give away uh, an Epiphone acoustic guitar pack. Um, all right. Um, our newsletter, we have a Learn to Master Guitar newsletter, and that uh, came out today. Um, um, did we ever give away the second thing? Did we ever give away this? I don't think we, we held it up. We, we held it up. We did. did we ever give it we away? We gave it to IMA Fingers. We did. Okay, yeah. all right, all right. So, um, Great. I, I missed a giveaway somewhere in here. I'll have to figure that I'll figure that out here in a second. All right. Our newsletter came out today. If you're not on our newsletter list, Fabian, maybe you can put up our, our archive uh, link and you can get our newsletter. We put out a newsletter every month. Uh, I have a new video tip. The video tip for this month is the 30-minute uh, practice routine. Uh, just what you can do, uh, what you should do if you've got 30 minutes. I have so many folks ask, uh, write in or whatever. Uh, here's my 30 minutes. What what should I be practicing at this point? Um, and I break it down. These are the these are the elements that you should have in your practice routine of uh, working on your technique, warming up, working on a little bit of technique things, applying that technique to a song, and then uh, the importance of being creative 
at the end and just playing something that you love Absolutely. Uh, at, at the end yeah. so you can fall in love with your guitar as, as you're finishing it out. Um, anyway, wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, resources in our newsletter. Uh, our student of the month is Ben Bob. So, uh, Ben Bob, thank you so much for uh, being our student uh, of the month. Uh, ben Bob, one of the also things that we're doing, and Ben Bob started this, is our Learn to Master Guitar Recording Challenge. Uh, on the discussion board, we did this last month, and it was Bob Dylan songs, and everybody would just record a Bob Dylan song, throw it up there. doesn't matter you know, if you're an advanced player or whether you're uh, an intermediate player or just starting out. Throw something up there. It's, it's a good process for you to learn something, record yourself doing it, and then put it out there. That's an important part of being a musician uh, at whatever stage you're in. Uh, is the value of performing. So it's an, another opportunity to do that. This month, the uh, recording challenge is Songs of the Road. So if any song that relates to the road in some sort of way, um, put it up on our discussion board in that thread, and then uh, everybody will vote on and we'll pick a winner or something like that. And it's a lot of fun. Thank you, Ben, for starting that. Uh, it's a great thing. Looking forward to great, great uh, things with that. Um, a couple of guitar events we need to talk about. Um, on next Tuesday, May 21st, Yes, you are doing a salute to Jerry Reed. There's a bunch of us, and this started the first time maybe about 15 years ago or 20 years ago when he was still around. Uh, I wanted to show Jerry how many of us had learned to play his tunes. <laughs> and so he was there for the first one, but now he's only there in spirit. And uh, Richard Smith put this yep. together. Richard was 12 or 13 when he was first hearing Jerry's music. But Tommy Emanuel, uh, Brent Mason, Tom Beresh, yeah. a bunch of players. And we're all just going to play some Jerry Reed tunes. Jerry's daughter, Sadina, yeah. is going to be there. Wow. And all for a good cause. It's going, I think, to Music Cares, yeah. the Grammy thing that provides medical help to musicians. Yeah. Um, if you're in the Nashville area or feel like being spunky and driving uh, to Nashville, <laughs> it's at 3rd and Lindsley, which is a music venue here in Nashville. Uh, Fabian, you've got the link to that. This is next Tuesday night which, by the way, we won't be having a live lesson uh, next Tuesday. So it's a perfect opportunity. Twelve bucks, I think, it's the tickets to, to get in. It's not, not much, yeah. You'll see Tommy Emanuel, John will be there, Brent Mason, Tom Bresch, star-studded lineup uh, from front to back, and it, it is sure to be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, we always have fun on Cherry Night. Yeah. Um, that's a great event coming but up next keep Tuesday. Keep on YouTube, I would say. Somebody's going to capture some of these. Oh, yeah, so. it'll be up on YouTube after it's over with. Um, next Saturday night, or excuse me, this coming Saturday, if you're in the Durham, North Carolina a uh, area, uh, the Guitar Summit 2013, one day uh, Guitar Summit is happening out in Durham, North Carolina. Uh, a great one day event. I think it's only 50 bucks to get in part of the day. Our good friend Will McFarlane is part of that. Michael Rapol, uh, Jonathan Dubose, lots of great players are part of that. So if you're interested in that, uh, check out the Guitar Summit uh, 2013 in Durham, North Carolina, this coming Saturday. So um, there you go with that. Let's give away. Let's give away this Epiphone acoustic guitar pack. This oh, is a wow. great, good folks at Epiphone uh, have given us this guitar to give away. Um, it's the guitar, but it's not just that. It's an amp that comes with it and a strap and, and things like that. But it's a nice little practice pack that you can, that you can uh, practice with. It comes with, it's got a pickup in it and a little uh, EQ and things like that. So the winner of this one is... Uh, oh, unfortunately, these can only go to folks in the United States. Sorry, it's a customs thing. I uh, can't ship them overseas. So the winner of this is Skip Disc. Skip Disc, you have just won an Epiphone acoustic guitar pack, and um, so glad you did. Man, Skip, I hope you are in the U.S. If you're not, we're going to have a very uncomfortable conversation um, doing with, with customs and getting things shipped to various things. Anyway. We'll send some squirrelies to Skip Disc. <laughs> there you go. So hopefully Skip Disc, you can do it. Uh, uh, congratulations. <coughs> send us your information. You haven't done it, won anything yet until you send us your information at service at legacyinstruction.com. Um, mailing address, phone number, things like that, so we can get in contact with you. All right. Uh, we will not be having a, li a live lesson next week. Um, I've got to be at an event for my son's graduation and you've got to cool. be at the Jerry Reed Tribute. At the Jerry Reed Tribute. <laughs> so um, there you go. Um, so the, we'll be on for the following week after that, which is May 28th. 
And uh, I'm not sure what we'll do there. We'll be talking a little bit about, uh, a lot of you have mentioned things about dealing with hand pain and, and uh, finger flexibility issues and things like that. So we'll probably talk about that. We'll have an open talk, and I'm trying to work out uh, 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 another guest. We did the thing with Bob Wild from Visual Sound Pedals, and, uh, and you folks just ate that up. So we're going to try and maybe do something like that with another uh, person talking about gear and stuff like that. So I've got some ideas for that. Um, Gibson Skills House, which is the white button underneath your Ustream window, uh, we put lessons there every week. Uh, not just one or two. We put probably four or five different lessons up over the course of a week over on Gibson Skills House. Um, this week, um, I've got a new style lesson, I believe it is, on jazz guitar arpeggios, um, teaching you several different arpeggios for major seventh chords, minor seventh chords, dominant seventh chords, and even threw in a half diminish there for good measure. Um, so that's a new lesson over there. That I have another foundation lesson on kind of basic strumming technique. If you're around session six or seven in the course, you're getting into strumming, uh, session eight maybe as well. Um, I have an, probably the most challenging power workout I've ever done over Gibson Skills House, which is a three note on a string, uh, scales, which, man, if you're in the course, that's session 17-ish, uh, and all the fun things you can do with those, and just connecting those all over the neck, very challenging workout, power workout, and then we also have an artist interview over there as well. Uh, some of the other guys are doing um, um, uh, song lessons, and the song that they're putting up this week is Boondocks by Little Big Town, which Little Big Town is going to be at the Opry this coming weekend, so... Um, Anyway, lots of good, fun stuff over there. Check that out. That's the white button underneath the Ustream window. Uh, you can get to all of our lessons, all of our art, artist interviews and stuff we've done in the past with Russ Berenberg, Ron Block, all kinds of great, great guys. Um, if you like our live lessons, uh, please like us uh, on, uh, in the Ustream windows. Uh, that helps Ustream to, to uh, realize what we're doing here. And uh, tell your friends. If, they're, if you have guitar-playing friends, um, let them know that we do this every Tuesday night, most every Tuesday night, and it is a blast. Thank you all for being part of it. Um, yes. <laughs> John, thank you so much for oh, being part of this. What a delight. This has been so much fun. Um, we definitely <clears throat> need to have you back. Yeah, I, I would love to do it. I've had a good time. You have been such an encouragement to so many of us over the years <laughs> and even tonight, so thank you so much. Thank you. Um, what are you going to play us out with? Well, since we're talking about Jerry Reed. Mm -hmm. Since I have my six string tuned down to D still, one of my favorites of his is uh, this tune, uh, Strutton. Whoa. It has this weird chord at the front, wow. which isn't anything until you do your little finger. And, uh, and then to keep your thumb going, of course, mm -hmm. like Jerry would, so mm -hmm. strutting.
Strutton. <laughs> Thank Feels good, much. doesn't it? <laughs> thank you very much, John. Uh, uh, thank you all for being a part of this <coughs> evening with us. Um, have a great week. Keep working on it. Playing music is a wonderful thing. We'll see you next time. See you then. <laughs>